So good morning and welcome to this meetup where Michael McKay will share how his team at Ørsted got started working with UX and design, uh, st strategic design thinking. And uh, I'm Tina Øvel and I'm going to be your host this morning. Uh, and again, we're happy to see so many people joining online uh, and we hope that you've had a lovely morning so far. And also a uh, good morning to you, Michael. Good morning. Uh, yeah, Michael is Head of Design uh, Center of Excellence at Ørsted, Excellence at Ørsted, and has a broad background in design leadership, product innovation, and user-centered design thinking. Uh, and now focus on building uh, human-centered innovation cultures in large size organizations, and uh, currently leads the UX and design thinking practice at Ørsted. So I'm looking very much forward to this talk, also maybe to have a bit more like hands-on experiences from yes. two other meetups we had. So yeah, very, very much looking forward to this. So Super. The agenda, yeah. So the agenda for today is that when uh, I'm done with all the practicalities, Michael will start his talk. You can ask questions in the QA section here in Zoom, and we will have time, hopefully have some time to go through some questions at the end of the session. Today, we have a hard stop at 10 o'clock, just showing you. Uh, we're recording everything, uh, and we'll share the recording during the next week, and we'll also have a reversed slide deck from Michael we can share as well, so uh, you can look forward to have that in your mailbox. And for those of you who do not know Preeli, Preeli is a self-service platform for unmoderated remote user testing. Um, it consists of three areas where you can create and distribute your tests. You can host your test panel and you can assess test data and analytics. And uh, we collect most uh, common usability and UX metrics. So I think that was all the practicality. So uh, happy to see you here, Michael. I'm uh, very okay. much looking forward to this talk. And I know like, Basel is one of the like big ones in my mind also when it comes to working with uh, with UX and also working with UX in a more scaled environment and so on. So mm. take it away. Yes, thank you. Yeah, uh, thanks. And uh, thanks for, for inviting uh, us in here. Uh, my name is Michael McKay and uh, oops, let me just uh, do the introduction. So my name is Michael McKay. Uh, I work at Ørsted. Uh, uh, Ørsted is, uh, as you can see on this uh, image, uh, Ørsted is a world leader in offshore wind and um, also going with solar. And, and that means that uh, uh, our uh, vision is a world that runs entirely on green energy. So, so basically a company that is in for, for uh, transforming the world and in order to do that, we have had to transform ourselves from an oil and natural gas company uh, a few years ago into this um, new space. And um, Ørsted uh, has built a design uh, department and uh, we are building a, a design thinking capability in order to help the company do that. And the story that I will share today is uh, about how we have done it. It's a little bit behind the scenes, uh, also talk about uh, how UX uh, is a major um, uh, vehicle for that, and how design thinking is uh, is, is uh, introduced as a as a strategic uh, tool here. Uh, first, a little bit about myself. So um, I, I have a, a kind of a long background in product development. Uh, so uh, you can say my my career has gone through uh, some very digital companies. Um, and uh, also being an uh, advocate for, for digital design thinking and strategic design thinking in uh, some less uh, digitalized companies uh, like Ørsted. Uh, and that means that uh, my time in the, in the Silicon Valley uh, taught me a lot about how a mature design community and design culture can look and feel like. Um, and then uh, now being in, uh, back in Denmark, uh, I've worked with uh, companies like uh, Lego and uh, Ørsted to really uh, say, well, how can we utilize that power of design in companies that are not necessarily uh, that mature yet uh, for, for, for this uh, strategic design and, and UX. Um, and as a starting point, let me just show a little bit of video from, uh, from, from uh, Ørsted. So this is the, the little uh, introduction video that we use um, at, at, at Ørsted when we, uh, when we start design um, or when we introduce design thinking for uh, non-practitioners. And the sound is not on, right? 
No, it isn't. Okay, so let me just see if I can get the sound on. Otherwise, uh, share computer sound. There project we. called Digital Trading, Beautiful. which is about oh, defining the future of our trading and risk management activities in, uh, in Ørsted. Digitizing trading activities is quite important because we actually start seeing uh, other actors in the market using algorithms or robots to execute very quickly in a way that we manually can't keep up with. We had our second workshop uh, called the ideation workshop and uh, we had previously defined a couple of problems that we wanted to find solutions for and uh, we wanted to do that through engaging the, the trading community plus the community that sits around trading like risk and back office. Design thinking alters from divergent activities that explores and opens up opportunities such as research, ideation and prototyping. These activities are followed by convergent activities such as pattern recognition, filtering, testing and decision making, which reduces the amount of alternatives to achieve concrete results. It's good it's actually focused here, but wider title Rapid altering between the two modes creates a highly dynamic work process, often described as a design sprint or a design thinking workshop. So we were split out into groups um, and then we came up with solutions and, and discussed those solutions in between and grouped them together. Uh, it was a really nice process actually to sort of group ideas together and, and, and build on each other's ideas. Design thinking operates at the intersection between user-centered design, business development and technology innovation. Using these three lenses at the same time enables us to develop feasible and viable product and service solutions that our users and customers love. Design thinking is valuable in many areas of our work at Ørsted. Maturation of epics and business concepts is among the most valuable. What I've learned about design thinking, it's definitely more than user interface design. It's about creating solutions and putting human perspective from the start in the center of that. It just, it just motivates and it gives a lot of energy because what you're allowed to see is that you really have boiled down powerful messages that are served up in fairly short intervals. <laughs> the value is, uh, is, is immense. There's, there's no doubt that we will benefit uh, throughout. Design thinking courses are offered through our academy and on the learning portal. So, So, uh, so I wanted you to see some of the, the, the storytelling and some of the communication that we drive around um, design thinking and, and UX. Um, I think as a, as a starting point, um, uh, I believe that the, most of the, of the participants in this call, you actually do have a, a, a much better understanding of UX and design thinking than the, than the recipients of, of this uh, video. Um, but. Uh, I hope that you can also see that uh, we, we, are, we really have been on an area where we had to go very basic in order for people to even understand what it is that we are talking about. Um, we, um, we started out with, uh, with um, looking at uh, what could be a framework that uh, we could use with our audience and, and really to, to drive uh, design thinking. And in the beginning, we used the Norman Nielsen uh, circle, uh, but uh, quite uh, fast and quite quickly, we saw that the uh, double diamond from, uh, from the British Design Council uh, uh, would, would maybe serve us better. So we've kind of uh, used the idea and the, and the talk about uh, working in problem spaces and working in solution spaces and uh, uh, a lot of the, of the work that we do right now is to um, help the organization identify that, that uh, most of our efforts uh, uh, work in the solution space and uh, we talk constantly about shifting left and saying let's, let's focus more on the problem and, and who has the problem rather than uh, the, what's the engineering solution ab about this. But, but uh, I can, I can uh, say that the double diamond is, is starting to really find some traction as, as, a, as a core frame 
for design thinking. Um, we, you saw in the video that we have um, created our own uh, little variant there because uh, some of the, the work that, um, that, uh, that uh, we have um, seen is that, uh, for example, uh, the uh, empathy work, the define um, uh, problem definition and the, and the ideation works really well around um, uh, understanding a problem. Um, and then prototyping, uh, testing and, and learning uh, is something that works well for solution. But we have uh, added uh, a, another element, the filtering, because in a company like ours, uh, with uh, a lot of, um, of uh, solution teams, there, will, there are always a ton of uh, ideas and solution proposals and stuff. So we've built uh, visual uh, filtering um, uh, ways of filtering so that we can filter both um, against uh, uh, user needs compared to business impact or or technical feasibility versus uh, effort and 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 the things like that so we can really so so visualizing and helping the company filtering ideas uh, faster is something that we have uh, built and, and recognized the same thing goes for the last part of the snake here or the chain here, it's the storytelling uh, in a company uh, as large as ours and quite distributed because of our many uh, operations around the world. Uh, storytelling uh, has become a major part of, uh, of design thinking uh, rollout at Erste, and you will, you will hear more about that later. Um, so that was a very quick uh, introduction to design thinking. Um, let me just see, uh, I have a little animation that, that you saw in the video. So we see iterative around problem, we see filtering efforts, and we see solution uh, rapid prototyping uh, fast cycles. Now I wanted to, uh, to uh, this was very, a very quick introduction to design thinking and how we kind of, the flavor that we are using at Erstel. Uh, and, and I want to talk to you about how we introduced it, because uh, most of the practitioners that I talk to around different industries, they always say, well, Michael, uh, uh, great that, that you did that, but how are you actually able to do it? Because um, it's very, very hard to get to a stage where these kind of thoughts and these kind of processes are um, accepted and, uh, and kind of uh, requested by your colleagues. Um, and we, we started with... Um, a sketch. So this is uh, from the first year. It, it, this was our driving um, uh, strategy, uh, the, the sun diagram. And uh, in, in short, it's uh, about having four different tracks, strategic tracks that we uh, pursued. Um, and in order to get to this vision of having an Erster that uh, uh, works with design thinking and design um, uh, kind of uh, throughout. Uh, the first track is uh, what we call design thinking capability. It's about creating a, um, a capability and, uh, and a, capac a capacity for design thinking. So we had a design thinking academy with uh, courses. Um, uh, we, had, uh, we, we started looking for wh which roles would we like to see design thinking within, so we could uh, work specifically on, uh, for those. We had speaker series and we built this community of, uh, of um, practitioners so that uh, those who, we, who are trained and those who are hired into Erstel, they have a place to go uh, and don't feel uh, alienated uh, as the first design thinkers. The second track is what we call incorporated design. And this is about understanding the processes and, um, and, and, and the different areas of uh, Erstel and then build in a desire for design thinking there. And the most important one is the, the little train there that I'll, I'll come back to, the um, Agile release trains, um, where we have um, um, managed to get a lot of traction for UXers, um, but also for design thinking. Uh, another where a place is business innovation and business model development uh, and, and, and other. I'll also get a little back, back to that. Within that is also this idea of uh, maturing design uh, over time. So you can see towards the end, we have design governance and design system, um, which is uh, this uh, important area that uh, as we start filling in uh, designers, uh, also maturing the way we work uh, as a design community, uh, we decided to do that um, in, in that order. The third track is what we call spearhead. 
and that is this idea of instead of talking about design and design thinking, let's do and show how design thinking works. So this was the most kind of controversial part of our of our uh, uh, launch strategy uh, was simply to go and find these wicked problems that uh, had been around Ørsted for a while and the uh, people had recognized them as big problems and then we we, uh, we went out to solve them, set out uh, what we call a design thinking dream team and then really kind of show something and that's where this uh, storytelling and, and, and other activities uh, are there and it's really to launch an expectation. Um, this, the fourth track is what we call design spaces, and that's to create um, both physical spaces and digital spaces and tools for design thinking to work. So uh, just uh, getting a space for co-creation workshops or being able to, uh, to facilitate large scale online um, uh, workshops uh, was, is something that, that we put into that track. And a little translation, so because this visual uh, language and this, this visual way of mapping is something that uh, lies very uh, close to a designer's heart, but our business and engineering colleagues, they, uh, the, it, it can be very hard for them to comprehend something uh, um, uh, symbol with symbols and, and sketches. So we, we created this, uh, it's an A3 uh, printout that we uh, often bring to our colleagues that, that actually wa walks through these four tracks. Why do we have these tracks? What are we trying to achieve? What are the what are examples of uh, activities that could go within that? Uh, so you can see design thinking capability track, incorporated design track, spearhead the change track, as we called it, and then design spaces track. Uh, I think this um, this uh, overview has done a lot of uh, good for us at at Ørsted especially because we maintained some of the creative uh, spark that, that drives us and put that into this more official um, uh, documentation that, that, we, uh, that we share around. Now we are three years into the work with design thinking at Ørsted and um, this is um, an image of uh, how we see strategic design thinking and UX design, how they fit together in, uh, in the product development uh, funnel. So uh, if you look at um, like a classic uh, product funnel with uh, an opportunity space uh, for conceptualization, there's a portfolio space for uh, creation of uh, product portfolios um, and product roadmaps. Then we have the development phase um, at, and at Ørsted we work in, uh, in SAFE so scaled agile frameworks um, and uh, then we have the operational track and uh, where is design uh, used then? Well UX design is uh, a key for us we have uh, the most of designers at Ørsted right now are UXers um, they work in they sit uh, in these uh, arts so agile release trains so that means that they sit in a cross-functional uh, team with engineers and uh, business people and they work uh, daily to implement uh, from a backlog. We also um, have the, the portfolio work and uh, one example is uh, digital trading. Uh, you saw it a little bit in the video and I'll, I'll come back to that. That was our first spearhead where um, someone came to us and said the way we trade uh, energy and, uh, and Ørsted uh, is quite active in trading energy and uh, because uh, the nature of our business is so that when we have a lot of wind we produce a surplus of energy we need to sell that or we want to sell that on the, on the on the energy exchange and then if we have uh, too little uh, we want to buy some energy to fulfill some some of our obligations so uh, the the digital trading is a key aspect of uh, of Ørsted's business and this had this was done uh, by operators sitting 24-7 in front of all these screens with a lot of tools. Um, and in order to digitalize that and automate some of that, we, we, had, we, uh, we pioneered design thinking and worked with the entire community, which, which is what you saw on the video just before. Um, and that, has, uh, that allowed us to grow this strategic design thinking, which, is, uh, which we work as a consultancy within uh, Ørsted. So as opposed to the UX design uh, practice, which is uh, um, 
people sitting permanently in, uh, in, in release trains. We have strategic design thinking um, with uh, uh, um, some designers that work in, in uh, this opportunity space before we know if there's a product or there's an opportunity. Uh, and another example of that is um, uh, offshore in your pocket, which was the, the, the key keyword for um, for digitalizing our our um, vast amount of data into uh, something more uh, useful than printed books, uh, where we came from, we, we actually created an app that has direct uh, connection to uh, a lot of very different data feeds, so that you can uh, we can uh, connect. Um, knowledge about uh, our, our wind farms and our projects uh, and, and this was done specifically for executives and communication experts um, that, that wanted to be able to talk uh, about um, Erster with real data uh, but this app turned out to be transformational because a lot of people at Erster uses that app now. Um, great, um, now we zoom out a little bit because this is another map that we use and you can see we use a lot of maps and that's because Ørsted is quite complex and a lot of uh, what we do is actually to help Ørsted see itself. So a lot of this storytelling is about uh, visual kind of uh, drafting of what seems to be going on and how do different uh, elements connect. So this is uh, the way we describe the digital innovation landscape. Uh, and if you look down uh, towards the white uh, labels one, one to five. This is uh, this is how um, the digital innovation works at Ørsted right now. We have this uh, strategy exploration area um, part one, where uh, our uh, design thinkers work with uh, business leaders uh, across Ørsted uh, to constantly uh, challenge and explore uh, the consequences and the and the directions that they have for their strategies. Uh, how, how uh, some, sometimes it will lead to uh, digital uh, products and, and tools, sometimes it will lead to organizational change, sometimes it will lead to uh, new positions in the market. Um, from there we go into uh, epic maturation or epic clarification um, where we, uh, we uh, with a, a slightly more effort go in uh, with uh, uh, teams, uh, engineers and the business people and look at what it is that, that we are looking at, uh, how could that become uh, a product. This is then distilled and, uh, and, and goes to PI planning. Uh, so that's a program increment for those of you who are not uh, into SAFE. And that is a three month uh, planning cycle that, that is done uh, before the continuous uh, implementation uh, through the, the release trains, uh, which is number four. So you could, you could say that the two, three and four is where all our UXs sit and the one and five is where our di uh, design thinkers sit or the strategic design thinkers. Um, because um, after a while we started to see a pattern and uh, we have uh, followed this uh, strategy here about three engagement levels of design thinking at Ørsted. So, so you saw what we, we call it engagement level one is designers uh, that sit in the digital design production uh, area. And that's the engagement for UXers, it's for user research, for things we know what, we know what they are and we want to build them so that uh, we can use them in the company. That's, uh, that's where most of our people sit. Then we have what, what uh, you saw with the, the design thinkers in, into the business, continuous business uh, uh, strategy exploration, where design thinkers and uh, business leaders uh, explore the consequences and, uh, and um, opportunities within uh, business strategies. Our third level, uh, which is what we are aiming for now here in year three, is to have uh, design thinkers work with the executive leadership uh, to help guide uh, us the long-term direction and uh, and really feed into uh, into the the, the long-term uh, strategic initiatives uh, and that's a process that's happening right now and the, the learning from this is that if you um, by uh, 
succeeding in level one, you are invited to perform in level, level two. By succeeding in level two, you might get invo uh, invited to perform in level three as designers in, in companies. Uh, and, and that's uh, this. So maybe th this progression here is the most important for, for you who, who are trying to build a, a similar design thinking presence in your enterprise uh, company at home. Um, I want to uh, shift and talk about the design roles and how we interpret that at Ørsted. So in the first year of our work, everyone was hired as a UXer. So UX as user experience design. Um, and that means uh, it was primarily user journeys, but it was also about uh, a role that did everything. So we ha we um, we uh, quite quickly in year two started to see that uh, in order to build and mature the design community, we needed to uh, put some nuance to what it means to be a designer, uh, a digital designer at Ørsted. And uh, so we built this framework here for, uh, the, that's the version of the organization we have now. We have uh, still UX and uh, most of the people we have are UXers and uh, they will continue to be. But we also had what we called VX or product design uh, or product experience. And that is a uh, UI work. It's a uh, visual, tactile, audio. So it's everything that the user touches and sees uh, that we, we started to see that uh, some people uh, wanted to uh, uh, focus there. We also saw the role of user research uh, emerging. So uh, the user research profile is uh, about uh, understanding uh, how, pe how users uh, think and feel, how they, uh, um, what kind of uh, work they do, and, uh, and really building these insight and empathy frameworks that are, are useful ac across the company. And they also do usability and uh, user testing. Um, so we are using a Preli uh, and, and uh, uh, quite happy about this idea of uh, not having to go to our users, but uh, connecting with them uh, online and, and do meaningful uh, uh, tests with them. Uh, a lot of our users, they sit on a vessel somewhere in the ocean and they are very, very hard to reach. Or maybe they climb uh, 100 meters above the ocean in, in a wind turbine uh, and, and it's very, very difficult to do uh, traditional user research there. The fourth um, area is design thinking, so user-centric concepts, design thinking, facilitation, and then uh, strategic design uh, and design strategy. Uh, and I'll get a little bit more into uh, uh, how that has uh, evolved. Uh, and then finally, we realized that uh, managing um, a creative um, team in a company like Ørsted, uh, um, designers, we are just different and we need uh, to have um, management and, uh, and and uh, environments and context around us that uh, um, allow us to thrive. So uh, I've um, said that uh, designers are not developers who do not code. Designers are actually designers and we should treat them not like developers. We should treat them like designers. So it's about staffing, seeding, budgeting, strategy implementation and stuff. This has then now in year three, it has evolved because I talked about the practice but, and I talked about the consulting, but this year we are building the Ørsted Design Center of Excellence, which is kind of the next progression of that uh, uh, green layer that I just showed you, this idea of how to build an environment that, uh, where designers can thrive and, and uh, how do we uh, take the community forward. Uh, and um, so the center of excellence is what we're building this year uh, and it can really uh, host both the consulting and the, the practice, uh, it will host our courses, it will host the whole idea of building a design-centered culture at Ørsted. So um, if we look long-term at uh, where design will go at Ørsted, this, these will be the three uh, legs um, for, for design. Practice for daily work and, uh, and, and creating a, a, a professional um, uh, skill at, at Ørsted excellence for the culture uh, and the kind of um, uh, development of this and then consulting for breaking new ground and uh, and delivering design to places where design has not yet been been uh, uh, become a practice 
and I think this slide uh, shows it that uh, uh, just uh, re-amplifies it. Uh, we digitalized Ørsted businesses first through the matured UX function, and then at the shoulders of that, we started building this uh, kind of a, a broader uh, aspect of uh, design thinking as a, as a strategic uh, skill. Yes. Just started. <laughs> and this is what I talked talk about before. This, uh, this is the prototype, early prototype for how this master in your pocket would do. Like, so the idea that you could uh, browse the world of Erster as if it was um, uh, a modern uh, mobile application. And um, at that time, when we built this uh, demonstrator uh, two years ago, uh, this was uh, uh, people had not kind of yet realized how what the, what's what's the the value of design. Um, so just building this prototype uh, sparked a lot of change for us, uh, and the, which is one of the other learnings that that we have. Um, uh, um, got here at, at Ørsted is that this high fidelity prototyping um, just kind of trying to get as close to a real product as, as possible can do a lot of wonder for us uh, compared to trying to describe it in words and, pro and uh, PowerPoints. Um, it, the, the difference is amazing because we as designers, we know what it is that we're trying to build and we are used to just trying just uh, um, Kind of describing it in words and uh, still images, but just creating that video made a lot of breakthrough for the understanding of what what could be the value of this. And of course, uh, that video uh, helped us uh, get get the app done, and uh, and suddenly a lot of other uh, of this more uh, what you could call a modern digital thinking was uh, was allowed to to uh, to some of these uh, business areas. The next example uh, I want to use uh, show is uh, from our digital uh, trading example that I talked about in the beginning. This idea of uh, these employees that work with so many and so complex uh, tools that we were not uh, able to figure out how they actually worked. And if we asked them what they did, they were not able to explain it themselves because they had done it so many years and uh, none of them did, uh, did it exactly like the other. So the solution here was um, to say, well, how could we uh, become a fly on the wall in the trading uh, uh, chamber or the, the area uh, where the trading is, uh, is done? Um, and uh, after a while working with some of these uh, respondents or the traders, we, uh, we persuaded one of them to wear um, some uh, mobile eye tracking glasses uh, and uh, this is this is just uh, this is not from the trading this is uh, my demonstration so that's my hand uh, and this so I we shot this video to convince them that they would wear this uh, at work so it uh, so, so um, just to uh, explain the the, the, the technology there the, the, these glasses they have seven cameras built in one of them looks ahead and that's uh, what you see in the video feed and three on each eye look at the, the eye direction and uh, computes this uh, yellow uh, dot with the, with the track. So very similar to eye tracking that we have done in the usability test lab for a while. But this mo mo mobile um, uh, ability uh, of it actually um, enables us to get go to places where work is done that we cannot comprehend. So um, when we had uh, done a couple of hours of uh, videos from the trading uh, desk, we invited some of the traders to sit in the screening room and suddenly they started to unpack uh, all the different kind of uh, overlaid uh, uh, work routines that they had built. Uh, and then we were able to start to look at uh, what what, are, what is the most um, how, how does it work when it works uh, best uh, if we fail uh, and and what do we do and we were able to get uh, a, some uh, quite uh, strong concepts that we could build uh, in order to automate some of the some of the more uh, important areas there 
Um, so so uh, this uh, mobile eye tracking uh, was also kind of a, a little bit of a leap for us uh, in order to to see that that uh, how could we use these uh, more modern um, uh, UX uh, techniques at work. Good. Let me just keep there. I want to talk about the design culture uh, at uh, at Erste because one of the um, kind of now I've shown you kind of like these are all the this is all the value we can get from design and the, these are all the things that we do, but in reality, um, as we uh, as we work, we have to create a zone where we have we I, I use this this uh, this uh, phrase permission to play. And it's it's actually a way to say we need we need uh, to create an atmosphere and a context where designers are allowed to do their work with the exper experiments, the the fun, the the the, the sprints and, and the bursts and and, and uh, all other things. Um, it's as important as getting the tools and processes ready, uh, and maybe even more, uh, in order to be able to do design in an enterprise like uh, like Ørsted. Um, we work with a let me just let me just get we work with um, uh, mindsets so uh, so uh, this I think this one uh, fits quite well what we're trying to achieve um, and so if we if we uh, if we talk about the mindset uh, and mindsetting for for people uh, in our training and in our culture building it's been easier for us to talk to to uh, to talk about uh, mindsets than uh, to talk about design methods at time. So uh, empathy, saying, well, uh, empathy, uh, this uh, understanding other people. So we have some of these, uh, we do exercises where people realize that uh, if they understand their user better, uh, then they will design for them and not uh, design for themselves. Um, we talk about optimism, uh, which is, uh, uh, I think for designers, uh, it's it's part of our DNA. But for engineers, uh, ma most engineering disciplines are uh, focusing on what could go wrong, and then rightly so. But in order to collaborate in a design thinking environment or with design thinking me methodology, we have to work with accepting that optimism could actually work for us. So this idea that, uh, hey, uh, in, in the best of days, what could happen here? just allowing yourself to work uh, optimistic uh, as an engineer or as a safety uh, representative or others can be, um, can be uh, important. And, and the vice versa, uh, of course, uh, we, uh, we design thinkers, we have to also understand uh, with empathy the, the context of uh, uh, these different colleagues uh, and, and how to, how to allow, still allow them to, to practice their work when, they, when we work together. Uh, this, the third one is embrace ambiguity and um, again understanding that uh, a lot of engineering disciplines especially um, do not allow too much unknown uh, and uh, too much divergent thinking uh, and so uh, working with the with uh, people's mindset that it's okay to do an exercise where you don't know where you will uh, we, you will arrive or you don't know how it's going to turn out uh, is, is something that uh, is quite important in order to be able to get people to work with design thinking um, make it um, we uh, work with um, uh, the, the idea of rapid prototyping and in our culture it, um, it it's it's uh, it's a cultural trait in, in the energy sector that you work with uh, quite a lot of uh, decimals um, because the numbers are very big and uh, the margins are quite small and that means that we had uh, we have a culture of um, of uh, calculating for a long time before we can uh, talk anything about consequences and so working with paper prototyping and uh, rapid build ra uh, building things uh, more rapidly and uh, creating uh, things that uh, th that uh, simulate something without being the real thing is something that we have uh, trained uh, as well. Learn from failure is another um, uh, area that we work with in um, 
and that way we have to train our colleagues uh, because um, Earthster works in an extremely um, kind of a, we, we need to have safety uh, as one of our, our uh, uh, highest uh, traits and this no failure culture is something that, that is uh, it's important for operating our business. But behind the scenes and uh, in, the, in the opportunity space, we have to let go of this, uh, um, uh, of this um, kind of uh, no failure uh, culture. So this learn from failure has been something that, uh, that we work with, uh, with our colleagues as well. And iterate is very easy uh, to talk with engineers about, but iterating at uh, 10 times the speed uh, what we are used to with uh, paper prototypes and, uh, and, and uh, le less data points uh, is something that we have uh, trained as well. And then the, the last, uh, the creative confidence, this idea that, um, that you can create stuff with your hands or you can create stuff that you are not uh, uh, pr proficient in yet and still share it. So building videos to share with colleagues or draw, uh, make drawings and share it with co uh, colleagues. We have uh, drawing cafes now uh, and the vi visual storytelling cafes where um, engineers and, uh, and business people uh, come and we, and we help train their drawing skills and, uh, and, and, and other uh, skills. So this is a, this is a part of this uh, building at design uh, culture at Erste where we have worked with both uh, process and method, as you saw in the beginning, but then uh, mindset uh, as, as a very big uh, counterpart uh, to that. Uh, when I showed the um, the first uh, uh, the first uh, map, the the sun diagram, it had a design thinking vision um, on the sketch, which was our long-term goal. And I just want to uh, tell you how we work with that. Um, from my time at Amazon, I, uh, I knew about the, the, the idea of writing a press release for your product before you start working on it, which is a, a, a quite, quite a well-known uh, practice from, from Amazon. Uh, what we did, we did a variant where we imagined uh, how a business review uh, visit us uh, uh, some years from now and uh, take a walk and, and in this article that we wrote ourselves uh, we went around um, the, the head, headquarter campus uh, so the idea here is that uh, the CEO and, uh, and myself as the, the, the design thinking uh, lead um, we walk around and talk about how design thinking has changed the company uh, and thereby we actually uh, prescribed a vision for what design thinking could be. This article works really well, or this format works quite well with the executives in the company that are used to looking uh, far ahead. Uh, it, it, it works uh, not as, it, it doesn't work as great with, uh, with the middle managers and, um, and practitioners around the company who are not used to, to kind of uh, these storytelling uh, uh, styles. Uh, but, but the article works really well with, with the execs and uh, the, the final page of that article has six small uh, referrals to places we have specifically won, these spearheads, um, and these are also imagined, at least they were at the time. And uh, uh, every year we revise this article and um, so this year we gave it um, a slightly longer runtime. I think we, we have a Howard Business Review, they now visit us in 2025 and we revised our, our articles and we were surprised that a lot of those articles we wrote back in 2017 uh, are actually uh, now coming. Um, they have been fulfilled so we, and we can now write uh, some even more progressed uh, articles. So this is uh, uh, the way that we have worked with the vision um, looking in the, in the rear view mirror. Finally, uh, I want to show the way that we are imagining the, the training. I to talked about the, the academy. So this is also just another design thinking prototype, but it's actually done quite well for us. So we reimagined the courses and said, um, if you want to become 
a design thinker, first you need to figure out do you want which level do you want uh, to, to, to reach. The basic level is for uh, just an introduction and here we say all the companies should know about design thinking so much that they know what kind of value they could get from it and also know how to talk just uh, rudimentary with design thinkers about it. Uh, you could say all these uh, managers who who will come and request services from us in uh, in, in our uh, uh, internal consulting, they should have a basic knowledge because otherwise they don't know what to ask for. So we've created a crash course, this introduction to enterprise design thinking. And we have also created uh, this uh, course 002, uh, introduction to enterprise design thinking in teams or introducing it in teams and organizations, which is uh, it's a conversation with managers about some of the things that I've talked uh, uh, with you here today, some of the dynamics behind the scene, how to work with a, with a team if you want to introduce these things. On the practitioner level, these are, this is um, a lot of these seven different uh, method boxes that are, that are showed in the beginning that we believe. So we've simply chopped them into pieces and then people can uh, piecemeal. And the idea is that um, uh, colleagues um, from different, uh, with different roles, they can go and say, well, actually, uh, I would like to be able to facilitate a small uh, design thinking sprint so they can, we can train them in that or they can have a use, do a user interview, or they can do um, a visualization techniques and all sorts of other things. Um, then the, some of them will progress into mastery. And uh, here we have uh, our, our, um, also a set of, of, uh, of uh, uh, tools, visual facilitation uh, or facilitating a Google Sprint or another five day strategic sprint variant. So like larger productions, uh, we also have mentor programs where uh, we, uh, we help people who want to achieve master, mastery but, but are not hired into a design department. So we have uh, mentor programs that they can uh, hook up with uh, some of us. Um, yeah, so, so that's, the, that's the idea of the, the academy. And uh, of course, we cannot operate all of this uh, with that little team that we have. So uh, we have uh, given all the headlines and then as soon as some, someone show interest, then we uh, develop that, uh, that, that, that course and, and or reuse a course uh, that we've done for someone else uh, before. But this uh, idea of the staircase and the idea of uh, putting a learning goal yourself uh, is something that has worked really well for us. So in conclusion, three elements that I, that I wanted to, to, to bring in. Permission to play this whole mindset and working with uh, th this kind of creating a thinking space uh, and, and allowing space for internal design. Then this uh, connection of design thinking with a practice like user experience design. In other companies, it could be design thinking connected with graphic design or it could be with uh, film production or something where craftsmans the craftsmanship of design is connected with the, 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 um, the strategic elements of the design thinking, so that design thinking is, is not alone. The, a product-centric view, so that every time we go in and do design thinking, we think like product designers. We say, how could we create a service that accelerates this? Or how could we create a product that, uh, that hosts this behavior? Um, and and uh, so so this uh, digital or physical product and service uh, thinking to add that uh, on top of the design thinking makes it uh, less uh, uh, easier to understand for our uh, colleagues uh, and also uh, it it uh, it, it uh, roots and anchors in reality whereas design thinking if it doesn't have that connection can can get kind of fluffy and uh, it can uh, it can start to lose its uh, it, its uh, purpose. Uh, vision, purpose, direction, this idea of working with these kind of long-term uh, goals for design and, uh, and then pursue them uh, over, over a long time. Uh, practice application knowledge is uh, our style of learning. So do something first, then figure out what you have just done and then uh, figure out what, what the theory is behind. So we are not teaching people uh, a lot of theory 
in design thinking, we do things that create value for them very, very uh, quickly. And uh, speaking of value, uh, I, I put in the word honeymoon uh, because when you start something like that and you are invited to, to work as a design practice, newly started design practice, there is a, I call it honeymoon. I learned that in, uh, in, in my time in, in, uh, in, in, um, in Silicon Valley. Honeymoon is a phase you have to figure out how many months is the honeymoon phase in your company. And that is the time that you can work before you deliver significant value as a new started team. And uh, knowing that is something that, uh, that help you set your, your goals. How quickly should we get to action? How long can we uh, spend time building uh, processes? So I think that I'll stop the, um, the presentation now and we can go to uh, questions. Yeah, awesome. And a very great talks. Thank you so much, Michael. Uh, I, I'm just amazed how uh, how positive your organization seems to be in, and also you have this opportunity to play and you have this opportunity to fail and all of these things. So I'm just like completely blown away by the whole environment uh, and also what I hear with when I talk with designers working at your company as well. So uh, yeah, yeah, it's, but, yeah, yes. but I. Yeah, but I actually have a question and it's a bit more like practical or a bit more like into the process. So how do you actually handle user testing, uh, testing in the art? Do you have a process there or is it more a hoc? I think that uh, user testing is, um, we started out saying uh, the UXers, they have to test their own thing. And, uh, and, uh, and I think you, you know, <laughs> and, and I know, that testing your own design is not very ideal. You, you uh, either you are super critical or you are you are very you, at least you can get very biased. And so the idea is uh, that um, we have uh, we 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 started out doing that with that uh, that that single stop with the the UX role that that had to do it all. We are, we are now crafting and building the the user research lab. That we have uh, that that we have done, and uh, you, you've uh, met uh, a, a lot of the people working there, and uh, that means that uh, other UXers in practice uh, they tip in with uh, with uh, some some uh, extra hours there or some uh, surplus hours, and then they test someone else's stuff, okay. and that's the idea. Uh, and and so we 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 have tried to work with very lean footprint, so we haven't built a big heavy uh, user research department, but we are simply uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, giving uh, UXers who really like research, give them an opportunity to research for someone else, uh, both research and, and test. So that's the way that we, uh, we are doing it now. Uh, the the long-term plan is that we will, with a limited footprint, uh, install maybe a head of research and, uh, and uh, a, a usability researcher, and then we can, uh, we can have them be uh, um, you can say that be the thought leaders within the organization to kind of cultivate that culture that uh, about testing each other's uh, stuff. Uh, but, but our plan is not to build a comprehensive big uh, kind of um, a task force. It, it might be in, in, for example, our globalization efforts that we will, uh, we, we need to get the researchers involved in different regions uh, that can, uh, that can uh, go around and doing field research. And then, then we cannot use kind of a, a UX time uh, they, they they simply don't have time to to travel around while they also uh, sit in in a train and, and deliver uh, continuously yeah, exactly. so that yeah. those are the thoughts we have yeah because i also see that's an issue right that you have the expectation that the uxs are actually like performing some stuff and also delivering some stuff and then you don't have time for both the research and the and yeah. the testing as well um, but but it's it's a principle that the uxs should always participate in the first rounds of interviews and set uh, be uh, also participate in creating the research guide uh, because when the material comes back they need to understand the uh, insights and take them in so if you have another department that deliver all that there's an e it could easily go into not invented here and that's not what i would have said uh, so we we have this uh, the the ux should always uh, co co-develop and co-facilitate uh, what they can, but if they if they, they want to do 20 interviews, they should do the first two them uh, with the user researcher, and then the user researcher could wing off and do it uh, in in all the other places to to kind of reinforce the the, the insight. Okay. So that's the idea. Yeah, great. So we have a lot of questions coming in. So we have Mass asking, 
what do you use testing tools like Preli for with users who works on a platform in the middle of the ocean? Question mark. Yes. Uh, so a lot of the work that we do at Erstel for the for the digitalization of the company is that uh, if you look at it, uh, Erstel has a leading. We've we've been in the ocean with the offshore wind uh, longer than anyone else. We did the first wind wind farm uh, almost uh, 20 years ago um, and um, and that means that uh, there's a lot of knowledge in uh, Kattegat and, and uh, the North Sea but we are going global so one of the ways uh, that we do is that we create tools that w that uh, digitalize the practice and then it's much easier to set up a, a business in the, the Mexican Gulf or in the waters outside Taiwan because then we have the knowledge that we have uh, had. So it's a very important part of what we do is to uh, uh, digitalize the, the, this core skill into tools that uh, others can use. And that means that uh, creating this and having some of those experts out there in the Kattegat to look at it and say, yes, that's exactly how we think. That's an, a very important uh, task. So we use Preli uh, uh, and uh, create uh, uh, early uh, Figma prototypes and uh, animate them, uh, code them up, and then we send them out and, and have them uh, test them. Uh, and sometimes we, we go out there to test them, and other times uh, we can have them test them by themselves via Teams. Okay, yeah. So there's a lot of questions coming, so we don't have time to follow them, but we have one from Anya. With proof of concept slash rapid prototyping late in, late in the process, how do you validate opportunities? Um, I don't think it's late in the process, this uh, prototyping, um, th this, uh, this, this, uh, the seventh step model is not to be seen as a uh, chronologic. Uh, it's, it's just an, a way to order problem and, and, uh, and uh, solution space. Uh, in, in reality, we, s we switch quite uh, often forth and back saying, well, uh, could we pursue something to learn to ask better questions is, uh, is often what we use uh, early prototyping for. Um, um, but also uh, during an implementation, we can also circle back and say, hey, we actually uh, need to learn more about this segment or this, uh, this persona, build the persona a little uh, stronger. So we can, uh, we can often circle forth and back between the two. Okay. So we have one asking, how do you manage product exploration and testing during a sprint cycle where you also have to deliver to, on a sprint goal? Yes, it's, uh, it, it's, it's one of those problems that we have in when we interpret the, especially the SAFE framework and, and other scaled frameworks. What we are trying to do is to have designers and product owners work one or two cycles up front. Um, because yes, you need time to explore and experiment before, so, before you have the whole train ready to build. So you cannot sit there in the, on the sprint one and then the, the, the train starts to, uh, to, to uh, uh, they, they need their user stories to, to, uh, to function. So the idea is to uh, shift left and uh, have uh, designers and, and uh, product owners to work in parallel. However, you cannot work too far ahead because the world changes so fast that the concepts that you did half a year ago, they might not be applicable today. So it's always a balance between how far in front of the train uh, should you be, be uh, going and, and we, we believe somewhere between one and a half and two sprints ahead is a good time where you, you still have time to have several options open and uh, try more things out and going around to different parts of your organization to test it uh, uh, instead of just sitting on your desk and inventing something and building it uh, the, the next day. Yeah. Uh, so, so, but that, that's, the, that's the, the kind of the metric that we're looking at. Yeah. Awesome. I think time is up. But yes. thank you so much for a very interesting talk. I'm not sure like if people can reach out because I can see there's there's there are coming a lot of questions in uh, the QA se se uh, section. So maybe you can reach out to Michael. I know you're a very busy man, yes. so I'm not sure if he has time for answer all of them, but maybe you could try and see what yes. happens. Yes, uh, uh, LinkedIn is good for, for those kind of uh questions yes exactly so i'll just wrap up and say thank you, thank you. For, for joining and thank you for the, the very interesting talk michael as well thank you
Then I have like a small announcement saying that we have a meetup again in December, where we actually have one of the founders of IDEO joining us. So this is Dennis Boyle, and Dennis will talk about design thinking and thinking as a designer. So I definitely believe that he will elaborate on some of the stuff you also mentioned in your talk, uh, Michael, cool. as well. So put a big X in your calendar December 9th. And if you're in Europe, it's going to be during the evening because Dennis is in the US. And again, if you have any ideas or suggestions on how we can improve these meetups, let us know. If you have a talk you would like to hear or a person you would like to hear speak as well, let us know and we'll see what we can do. And uh, keep an eye on your inbox where you will have a recording of this session and also uh, Michael's slides as well. So thank you everybody for, and thank you Michael for a very interesting talk and uh, have a great day. Thank you. Thank bye you. Bye-bye.